In this video, we'll be looking at the transport of carbon dioxide uh, in the bloodstream. Now, we say that actually there are different ways of transporting carbon dioxide. Some of them will be transported in uh, inside the replica cell. It can bind to the uh, hemoglobin uh, to be transported. Uh, sometimes they can be just dissolved in the plasma. Uh, as carbon dioxide, but we say the majority of the time the carbon dioxide is actually uh, transformed into uh, hydrogen carbonate ions, uh, which is then which is processed um, inside the replica cell, but then actually finally transported in the plasma. And we're going to look at the process in which this happens now. So these three represent the cells uh, and the. The space around them will be the tissue fluid, and then these two lines is representing the uh, capillaries inside, and we've got the replica cell here and the plasma on the empty space around them. Okay, so we're going to look at the process now. So we're saying in the very beginning, cells obviously do respiration, aerobic or anaerobic respiration, and in the end result, we will make carbon dioxide and water, and we're going to be looking at carbon dioxide here. So first of all, inside the cells, the carbon dioxide will diffuse out of it into the tissue fluid here, and then the carbon dioxide can diffuse into the plasma as well, then finally diffuse into the uh, red blood cell itself, like that. And then uh, the carbon dioxide actually combines or reacts with the water uh, inside the replica cell and it will turn uh, into the carbonic acid, which is H2CO3. And notice that the sign here is reversible because the whole process can be reversed. And then we say that actually uh, carbonic acid is what we call a weak acid and it can dissociate very easily or ionizes very easily into two things. Because uh, for some, anything that is acidic, but they must make hydrogen ions. Uh, if they can't make hydrogen ions, then they're really not, not really an acid, we say. So first of all, it will break down into one hydrogen ion and then the rest of it will combine together to make hydrogen carbonate um, ions, which is HCO3 minus, like that. And that is the ultimate form of the carbon dioxide when it is being transported. And we said in this case we need to process these two things, okay? Now first of all, like I mentioned, the hydrogen ion is what actually makes the whole thing acidic. It's not just this. If it's the uh, carbonic um, acid, H2CO3 CO3 like this, that keeps intact um, in this case, then it doesn't actually demonstrate any acidic properties. It's when it dissociates itself, forming hydrogen ions, that's when it, the whole thing becomes acidic. So we need some ways of uh, basically buffering uh, the hydrogen ion to make it go away, basically, to combine it with something else. And we say in this case, actually combines with hemoglobin to form something called hemoglobinic acid. So we can simplify that as HHB. And um, so because the, now the hydrogen ion is bound to the hemoglobin, it no longer exhibits its acidic properties, so it's fine. Now, then on the other hand, the hydrogen carbon ions, yes, technically speaking, it can stay in the replica cell, but the thing is that may increase the um, concentration inside. And ultimately, if we don't have, uh, if we don't try to remove them, then the replica cell would essentially become concentrated or full with hydrogen carbon ions, and we can no longer transport more uh, carbon dioxide inside. So in order to maximize that, we have to, we can actually transport this outside of the replica cell, and it goes into the actual plasma. Now we've got a different problem, that now that the hydrogen carbon ions is now transported outside, the charges are not balanced, you can't have suddenly something that's supposed to be more negative inside and suddenly it's not quite so. So therefore we say in order to counteract that problem we have something the, called the chloride shift, where the Cl- minus ions that is normally inside the plasma will actually be transported inside here. And there you have it. This is the whole process of carbon dioxide transport. So, uh, quick run. In the beginning, we've got the cells that do respiration releasing carbon dioxide. They can diffuse out into the tissue fluid, then into the plasma, then finally inside the replica cell. When it's inside the replica cell, the carbon dioxide will bind to the oxygen and react to form carbonic acid. Carbon dioxide is a weak acid which can then uh, ionizes and dissociates easily into hydrogen ions and uh, HCO3 minus, which is hydrogen carbonate ions. The hydrogen ions are then buffered and bind to the um, hemoglobin to form hemoglobinic acid. 
than the hydrogen carbon ions in order to maximize the efficiency of the rubber cell trans uh, converting uh, or transporting carbon dioxide. They will be uh, transported out of the rubber cell and they can remain stable inside the plasma and travel along. Uh, and, and then we've got the chloride shift happening where the chloride ions actually goes back into the replica cell in order to balance the charges that uh, actually has happened here. And this is what happens when the replica cell gets the tissues and the organs. Now, and then it travels all the way along the bloodstream until it gets back to the lungs. And then inside the lungs, this whole process reverses in the, and goes back in the opposite direction. The chloride ions will come back out, the hydrogen carbon ions will go back in, then hemoglobin acid dissociates into the two uh, hydrogen ions and the hemoglobin. Just to add that to make it very clear. Uh, then after that, the hydrogen ion and the hydrogen carbonate ion will bind together to form uh, carbonic acid. The carbon dioxide will then separate to form carbon dioxide and water. Carbon dioxide diffuses into plasma, then into the tissue fluid, and finally into the cells within the alveoli, um, and then finally out of the alveoli and breathed out of the body. So this direction occurs in tissues and organs, and the opposite direction occurs when we get to the lungs. And this is how we transport carbon dioxide in the body.